Let's continue our study of graphs and take a look at some special graphs. So a complete graph is one of the special kinds of graphs, and I want you to notice the notation k sub n. And essentially, it is a simple graph. So remember, a simple graph doesn't have any double edges and it doesn't have any loops. So it's a simple graph that contains exactly one edge between each pair of n distinct vertices. So I've drawn some of these out for you. I know my um, abilities in drawing graphs is just staggering. You're welcome. But this is K1, and K1 obviously means that there is just one vertice, which means there's not going to be any edges because we can't draw a loop or it would not be a simple graph anymore. K2 is two vertices connected just by one edge. K3 is three vertices. You get the idea. K4, four vertices, and notice each one is connected to each other one. Two other very related special types of graphs are cycles and wheels. So a cycle, if you'll notice, looks kind of like our complete graphs, but we've taken out all of the stuff in the middle. So a cycle consists of essentially the vertices, um, all of the vertices that we would normally have in a complete graph, but the edges would connect you know, V1 to V2, V2 to V3, V3 to V4, etc., all the way up until you know, the Vn minus 1 to Vn, and then Vn to V1. So basically, it just makes a cycle. It goes all the way around your circle. Whereas a wheel is obtained when we have an additional vertex, and typically we stick that in the middle, um, where that is then connected to all of the existing vertices. So we can see the similarities between these two graphs and between these two graphs. All I've done is I've taken an extra little vertex and I've connected it to all of the other vertices that existed before to make sure that it was then considered a wheel. So obviously applications of a wheel might be something to do with networking because it sure would be better to have processors that were directly connected to each of the, say, computer stations, as opposed to this guy right here being a processor, and then it having to travel two distances to get to the guy on the other side. An N cube or a hypercube is another type of special graph, and we can see the notation here is QN, and that's what tells us that it is a hypercube. And essentially what happens is we have a graph with vertices representing the two n bit strings of length n. And it's obviously multidimensional as you get larger and larger and larger. And each adjacent vertice differs by exactly one bit position. So if you'll notice what happened here is I have two uh, bits. I have zero and I have one. That's this guy and this guy. and all I did really was then double that. So I took a guy here and said, well, this is 0, 1. And I took a guy here and said, this is 0, 1. And on this one, I added a 0 in front. And in this one, I added a 1 in front. And then I connected the dots. And then I took that square, and that's my little note over here. I took that square, and I doubled it and I added a zero in front of the bottom ones and a one in front of the top ones, and then I just connected. So that is how we construct a hypercube. Bipartite graphs are actually used quite a bit. Um, obviously, the hypercubes are used quite a bit with computer programming and networking and that sort of thing. But a bipartite graph um, is called a simple graph. I'm sorry, it is a simple graph. It's bipartite essentially if we can take the vertices and separate them into two disjoint subsets such that all of the points or vertices in this subset are not connected to one another and all of the ones in this subset are not connected to one another and the only edges um, that are, exist in our graph go from one subset to the other. So this would be considered a bipartite graph. So let's take a look at a couple of questions to see if we could essentially rewrite this as a bipartite graph. And notice we're going to use a graph coloring technique. 
um, and really all I'm going to be doing is, is coloring the vertices. So I'm going to use two different colors and I'm going to start by coloring A as green. So what I know is that if A is green, then the other vertices that can be green are things that are not connected to it. So green can only connect to non-green, which means, uh, let's use blue, C would be blue, and E would be blue, and F would be blue, and G would be blue. So to determine if this is going to be bipartite, I now have to look at B and D and say, would those work with whatever color they should be based on the fact that I already have a lot of blue on here. So looking at D, D connects to G and to C, which means B cannot be blue, D cannot be blue, it must be green. And that seems to work okay because green is now connected because D is connected to four and all four of those are blue, so that's okay. So now it comes down to B. Can B be colored in a color um, that works with my coloring scheme? So B is connected to a blue and a blue and a blue, which means, lucky me, B can be green. And so can this be a bipartite? Yes, it absolutely is. If I wanted to make it um, extremely clear, I could put A, B, D on one side, and I could put the rest, C, E, F, G, on the other side, and then draw in all of the connections, which I'm not going to do, but you get the idea of how that could look like a bipartite graph that I just showed you on the opposite page. So let's try the same for H. And again, if you'd like to press pause and try it on your own, you can certainly do that. But let's again use green. So I'm looking at A. Let's turn A into green, which means anything connected to A can't be green. So let's make B blue and let's make E blue and let's make F blue. And we can see that that's not okay because F is connected to E and blue can't be connected to blue. And F is connected to B and E. So this is not going to work. This is not going to be a bipartite graph because my graph coloring didn't work. The last special type of graph is a complete bipartite graph. So we've talked about complete graphs. We talked about bipartite graphs. Now we're going to look at a complete bipartite graph. And again, notice our notation. So K is that same letter that we used for a complete simple graph. But now instead of just one subscript, we have two. And of course that tells us how many vertices are in each of the two subsets because a bipartite graph has the two subsets. So this guy right here has a set of two and a set of three, which is why it's the complete graph for two comma three. And notice all of the points in this set are connected to all of the points in the other set and vice versa. Um, of course, that's what makes it complete. And then this would be K44 because there's four here and there's four here. So it's a complete graph because each of the four in one set is connected to each of the four in the opposite set, but none of these in this set are connected and none in this set are connected to one another.